You are going to love this sister to sister show. Flo, someone wrote this question. When is it okay? Are there circumstances that make it okay for Christians to judge each other? Well, we're going to find out pretty soon, Kathy, but this is the one that has me the most concerned because we as the sisters are going to have to help someone know when to hold them, know when to fold them. This person's got a husband that's a gambler. Oh my gosh, it's going to be a great show. Just Stay don't tuned. Judge. Hey there, welcome to Sister to Sister. So glad that you've joined us today. Really good questions that you send in, we answer, so here we go. This is a really good one that's kind of bad, you sent. It's, good. it's, it's bad. Really good. Yeah, it's a good it's question, bad. but it's bad. Okay, Flo, will you take this thing here? Um, I believe my sister is marrying the wrong man and I don't want to attend the wedding. However, if I don't, it'll probably be the end of our relationship. Uh, yeah, maybe. Flo. Well, I, I like her perspective already. She's expressing how she feels and then yet she's looking at the more higher price and it's, that's the relationship with her right, sister. Right, right. And right. the that's thing right. of it is, is I've heard different stories, you know, where people, the family wasn't in agreement and felt this guy's not good for you or this woman's not good for you and it turns out to be the best thing in their life. And then I've seen stories where that was actually true. What you don't want to do is begin to rip apart the weaving of that safety net that you as a family create for that loved That's one. Right. And so, and I feel by me not showing up, I'm not showing up for you. Um, here's, here's, here's something, if yeah. I can throw this out real, real quick. Um, you know, we, this is a different topic, but it's still about marriage. When you, let's say that someone in your family um, uh, is gay and they're getting married and we discuss, do you go to the wedding or do you not go to the wedding? That is still my brother, sister, uncle, cousin, nephew, whatever. Um, I am going to love them. I am going to go. Now I know a lot of you don't agree yeah. with that and that's okay. You got to go by your conviction. My conviction is I am ministering to souls and the right. worst thing I can do is abandon that soul when they need me. That's right. good. Anybody else on marrying the wrong guy? I mean, I have? agree. You have to maintain that relationship mm -hmm. and I say channel your energy into praying for that couple. That's right. Uh, that's you know, right. That's good. like they, they need prayer and mm -hmm. you know what? Couples have overcome a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have heard people say, I'm not, I give them five years and it's over. First of all, what are you speaking into their relationship? That's like, right. are we That's speaking really negativity good. or positivity into their relationship? So, you know, you might not think that they're the right person for them. And I'm not saying that you, fake, you know, speak fakeness into the relationship. That's oh right. yeah, I absolutely think he's the perfect guy for you. No, you don't <laughs> lie and be dishonest <laughs> about it, but I don't think you should be speaking constant negativity into yes, the relationship. Right. Very good. Very you know, good. You, you speak God's truth into your relationship. God can, you know, strengthen this marriage. God can help you. That's God, right. Speak what God can do in this right. relationship. Oh, wow. mm, well, someti sometimes you think, oh, this is not going to work. And I have a situation, I've just thought of it, that a, a wonderful Christian friend and a wonderful Jewish friend were getting married. And it was at a big non-denominational place. So there was a chuppah. And so the mothers, the two mothers were walking upstairs to light a candle. Well, the one mother tripped on her dress, grabbed the chuppah thing. The other mother grabbed the, tried to help that lady. She fell. Both mothers were on the floor and the chuppah on top. And all I heard all around me was, oy vey. <laughs> Talk about not lasting. Meanwhile, they've been married 21 years. And yeah. Thank you, Lord. Praise so anyway, it, I thought That's about that. That's because the hoopa fell on both the parents, At breaking the every time. generational oh negative curse they ever tried to oh make. That's so good. There you go. Anybody else on the marrying the wrong I just person? Say, rejoice with those Amen. who rejoice. When she weeps because of her mistake, you weep with her That's too. Right. That's right. Go That's there, right. support your sister, your brother, whoever it is and be there for them. That's yes. right. You know, Amen. brother is born for adversity. 
you know, right. Uh, so. Right, well, I'm gonna to go to this question too. It's a little bit about adversity. And here's what it is. She writes, I wanna to go to church and take my kids, but my husband doesn't want me to. Do I submit to my husband or to God? Amy, I'm gonna to come to you because you're a pastor. What do you got? Yeah, to me, that's a no-brainer. I mean, we, we submit to God first. Right. He is our ultimate authority and that will help us submit to our husband. Uh, the thing is, you know, you want to do this in the right spirit, you know, no, but the yeah, Bible right. says forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Right. And it also says that a man that is a non-believer will be won over by her what meek and gentle spirit. So I think about my grandma and grandpa, Amma and Papa, and Aunt and Papa, World War II, they came out of the Great Depression. He was a prisoner of war, missing in action, just as, uh, uh, worked on the oil rigs and just did not want to go to church. But she did, and she loved the Lord and would read her Bible and she would go to church. Well, one day, Papa said, I want to go with you. Papa goes to church. My memories of Papa, I'm a little girl and I'm hiding under the bench in the church because Papa's standing up to testify wow. about how the Lord has been so good to him and saved his family. And I mean, that is, that's to me is a great picture of what it looks like. It's not to be a burr in your husband's right. bottom. Right. It is to honor God in a sweet yeah. way. I think this is a question for all of you, for the, the people watching, because there's many of you, you go to church and your husband doesn't go to church. I, I know many of you feel that way. So I hope you hear us today. Corey, what do you have? Um, I'm just thinking of like Timothy with his mother and his grandmother and you know how, how they were honored in the word and what they the legacy they passed down to Timothy. We don't really know much about mm. his family situation. Right. The but men weren't mentioned. Right, the men weren't yeah. mentioned. And so it's just, you know, they honored God. They right. they submitted to God and they knew that they had to raise Amen. Timothy up under, you know, the Lord. And that's what they did. And, you know, what Timothy did for the Lord because of how they raised up Timothy. Right, right. And can I mention one more thing here? Abigail's my lady. Yes. You know what? Her husband, what was his name? Nabal. Mm -hmm. And he was unwise. David comes in, protects Nabal's field with all his men, said, please help me. Nabal says, go help yourself. I'm not wasting my money on you. What does Abigail do? submit to her husband and say, go. No, she was wise. She was intelligent, the Bible says. And she went and said to David, I will help your yes. troops. I right. will help you. Was David was attracted to uh -huh. her wisdom uh -huh. and her strength. Don't be silly, ladies. <laughs> when you want to follow the scripture, follow the scripture. This isn't an act you just do. You listen to God. She listened to the Lord. She did what she knew. Uh, the Lord's anointing was on David and that she wanted to help. And she defied that. Sad Nabal passed away days later for some other reason. But and Abigail became David's wife. Where was, where is this? First Samuel, I mean, I think this is a really good scripture for someone who's struggling with what do I do I want to hear God and my husband mm -mm. it's not just for church right it's right. for anything that the Lord oh, I'm sorry it, tell me what it is again uh, first I'm sorry. Samuel I want to tell 25 them. first okay. Samuel 25 you know do it in in meekness and yes. goodness yes. in honoring yes. but you know she didn't say she didn't yeah. buy the bust in and say oh Nabal you're a fool no. Right. no she knew he was a fool but she didn't <laughs> say all that she went quietly discreetly she didn't tell King David that with, like with that. wisdom yeah, with right. wisdom and the strength of the Lord to do yeah. it God's way not her way right yeah. so it's right. a good story I think it's a good something in history to study and learn yeah. uh, how the women uh, really, really honored God in what they did. So good. Well, Flo, so, what would you tell her? I think submitting to God is submitting to your husband. I don't think you can submit to your husband without submitting to God. And so as I submit to God, then out of that overflow comes the wisdom with how I submit to my husband in these type of situations. You always have to look at the root because that's where the fruit is coming from. So why is he so dead set on them not going to church? Yeah, why is he yeah, so dead know. set on my children not that's going good. to church? You might be dealing with a wound. 
you know? And so knowing how to pray. See, it's nice to study the word. Yeah. And I know sometimes we feel challenged to do it, but we have to be careful um, that we're not just giving the letter, that we understand the spirit of it. I can repeat something. You could be an encouragement to me to study a particular thing, and, but it can't be about competition. It can't be about promoting myself into a position. It has to be about me finding more out about my God because when I do that, I come to know him and that's intimacy. And those that know their God will do great and mighty exploit. What would be a great and mighty exploit out of this? My husband being saved, the saved wife sanctifieth her husband. So that may come with maybe right now, I hate to say this, in this season, I might not take the children to church. That don't mean I can't have church. Wow, see, I, I would I don't never have to expect you, you to say that. Yeah. I would never expect you to say, um, don't go to church. Because the religious side of us sees the church as the brick and mortar. Oh, I yeah. am the church, you are yeah. the church. I am, it's just like when I look to the church to raise, I send my children to Christian school because I want them to have all the Christian values. That's my job. Because also in Christian school, we have the children that have been put out of public school for behavior issues or whatnot. Right. So you're, you're in there with non-believers, problematic children, what am I teaching them at home? And the word says that if I, if I, the parent, raise them up in the way that they should go, they won't That's depart. Right. Well, I don't know. Not I, if my pastor I, does it. I'm not That's with you on that balance. one. I'm not because I, I don't That's think God, balance. if she's going to submit to God or submit to the husband, I, I don't think God would tell you don't go to church. I don't. But I'm going to move on because you're allowed to have your opinion because you do have a lot of wisdom. Yeah. Well, I think too, it's the religious, let's stay there for a minute. Yeah. That's the religious mindset. Yeah. Mind, because if you, No, not just you. There's a lot of people that feel right, that way. Right, you're, you're, you're speaking for a lot of people I and I think I'm that's, that's a legitimate you. thing. You know, a lot of people feel, oh my God, she just said, don't go to church. Yeah, you're not you even did. hearing me. This well, is what I, I mean. I'm not saying don't go to church. I'm saying for this season, you might have to submit. Listen, what's the difference between if something happens to you physically and you have to stay home? Remember we talked about yeah, the sick did. and shutting yeah. and yeah. the yeah. deacons come and visit you or the elders come and yes. visit you. They serve you communion. Kid, is communion not communion because you're giving it to me in my living room? Yeah. No, it's still said, communion. Be the church at home. That's right. If you're not going, be the church at home. All right. Teach well, your kids. I, I like all this, but mm. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's, it's a, it's a but, different approach. I know. Okay, but I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna move to the next question because that's what I do. <laughs> I don't have confrontation. I can't even believe I confronted. All right. Well, Here, I think it's good. I, I guess. think it's good too. All right. <laughs> Bring oxygen for Kathy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Stat. Here's a question for you, Amy. Code blue. Code blue wants us to the sister chaos. Code blue. <laughs> This Here is comes a, the ambulance. <laughs> Robin, where's our producer? Robin. <laughs> Kathy would disagree. Okay. Um, here's, what, here's what I don't disagree about. Well, I don't know what Amy's going to say, but I found out my spouse has a gambling problem, debt, and I don't know what to do about it. Ugh. Uh. Yeah, this is wild from submission, you know, to gambling and the church. Um, Proverbs uh, thirteen eleven says, wealth quickly gained is quickly wasted. Easy come, easy yeah. go. But if you gradually oh. gain wealth, you will watch it grow. So gambling is an addiction. Mm. It is quick money, fast, and you keep gambling it because you think you're going to make more money and it's releasing all these endorphins in you. So I thought of, you know, how do you, what is the highway, the pathway out of this? And I thought about um, triple A's. Number one, it's an addiction. If you, if you is gambling debt, then somebody's addicted, which, so that's a whole other discussion. Um, you've got to act. You can't put your head in the sand because this causes divorces. This depletes retirements. Yeah. This you puts your house on the line, Urgent. your car on the line, your savings on the line, your kids' futures. It is a serious matter. Yeah. And then you have to have <laughs> accountability. And you, people, somebody needs to know, the right people need to know, they need to know, he, she knows, he knows, we're watching you, if this is going to work out. But, I mean, how do you stay married to somebody that's gambling away your life savings, your life? Your life is at stake in their hands, and they're just gambling it away. See, this is why I pays to listen, because the moment you said trip away, my mind went to the auto. I literally thought the same thing. I'm like, we're I'm like, what's 
triple A? What is triple? What's triple A? I mean, it's like a play on words. Triple A. No, you're right. Now that they can remember, we get it. It's an addiction. It's just good. It's just good. So I was so confused. I was like, "What are they going to change your tire? They going to remove your tires? You can't drive." Yeah, that's what you should do to your husband. Take his tire. Or wife, take the tires. We need redemption. Take the tires. It was what we had in our head when you said it. You were, you were right. There's no tires. You know what? Triple A might be going to get their car. Yeah. Somebody, yeah. they've sold the wheels, the pipes, and the, you know, yeah. the carburetor to make money to gamble. I mean, call him oh. up. Like, he gives advice uh, for this kind of stuff. Or call because, an attorney. Or call Roxy. <laughs> no, not me. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> you know, the other thing is, you know, it's, the Bible says be wise as a serpent, gentle as a dove. Yes. Yeah. Maybe you need to, you know, get some good financial and legal advice and cut the checking account. Yes. Cut the other things. Yes. Totally. You know, wa access watch what money. you're doing. Access to money. Uh, you know, I'm not right. going to give legal advice here, but you can't let it go. It's not going to redeem itself, itself. No. if it's so far down, as right. Amy said, right. as an addiction. Yep. It's a stewardship issue. Yep. It's an addiction issue. And, you know, Flo talks about counseling and help. You mm -hmm. can't force somebody to do it, right. but right. you could do physical things to make life unpleasant yeah. for the person who's right. addicted and not enabled. Right. Well, we hope that you got some truth from us today. Stay right there. We have lots more Sister to Sister coming up. Welcome back. The conversation continues. And I have more great questions like this one. Ooh, are there circumstances in which it is appropriate for a Christian to judge others? Corey. I, I mean, I think judging has become a dirty word. Um, but, mm. I, you know, there, we judge all the time. We judge whether something's safe or not, whether, That's right. you know, communication styles, if we agree or disagree with someone, if, you That's know, right. if an employee is performing their job well. So, I mean, there are times when judging is necessary. That's right. Um, it's, it's when we take those judgments and we then use them to gossip or to use mm. it to harm others. That's right or to wield power over someone um, or inappropriately, um, as we discussed in, in other shows where we, you know, we're judging when someone com comes into the church and we're using that to say, you know, you shouldn't be wearing that. You shouldn't be, you know, looking like that. You shouldn't be you know, God says, come as you are. So there, there, there's definitely times for judging and times not for judging. So I think that you have to look at what is the motivation right. behind the judging. Um, I think that, you know, we, instead of, you know, you talk about rose colored, colored glasses, we, we sometimes have those judgment colored glasses. And That's I think good. we need to learn to take those off. That's, mm -hmm. that is not our role to have those judgment colored glasses on. Right. Well, um, I, you know, Corey, I, like that's judging all the world stuff, but I really feel that Christians sometimes judge other Christians. Well, I read my Bible every day. Don't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I go to a life group, don't you? Oh, I serve on this committee, but you don't. So I really think we, I go to this church, it's better than your church. Yeah. I think that's as fine. Christians, yeah. that's my big thing. That's Stop sin. judging each other right. on their faith. You don't know where they are on their faith walk. Is and, that judgment or being critical? There's a difference oh, well, between yeah. judging and being judgmental. And Matthew okay. and Corinthians, Paul addresses it. Matthew, it gets addressed by our Lord and Savior where he takes the time to teach us. This, this is what this involves. And he tells us to look Look at the speck in your own eye. Yeah. You yeah. know, look at yeah. what's in your yeah. eye before you go That's take it out. Perfect. So it's like coming from myself. Let me let me check flow first before I start trying to tell Roxy about yeah. this. And what Thanks, I found, yeah. if, if I do that, then we find a common ground and we encourage each other right. out of that yeah. spot. Right. So it's like, Beautiful. you know what, uh, Roxy, I noticed so and so. And you know, I used to deal with this and I used to deal with that, and this is how yeah. 
I got delivered or how, what, what helped me to yes. get over that. Because right. we are our brother's keeper. And if you're That's not, good. you know, if you don't, it, it, I, I, you always say, you call us on the semantics, how sometimes we oh, get yeah. caught up in the semantics. But the thing of it is, is that the, it's the saints that are going to judge anyway. We are called to judge. We're just not to be judgmental. As you already said, yeah. it's the motive of the heart. How am I going uh, about it? What is behind that? And here's the thing. If you struggle with just the term being judgmental, you are a disciple maker. We are supposed to be mentors. And so if I am holding someone accountable with the love of God in my heart, bringing, uh, you know, bringing that person into a more intimate relationship with the Lord, then I believe that is a good thing. And sometimes I have to do that by inspecting their fruit. Okay. So if you're well, not going to judge, be a fruit inspector. I just want you to know that I don't think I'm better than you because I spend time in the word. I think I am receiving. So I just like Flo said, I want to pass that on. So I, I just don't want you to feel judged in your Christian walk. Okay. So this question here is our last question and it's really good. I have heard it said that when I fear, it's because I'm not trusting the Lord. Is that really, is that that simple? No, I don't think it is. The fear, <laughs> not simple. <laughs> fear goes along with trust. How do we begin to trust God unless we have fear first? We grow, we learn. As Flo said, we're mm. disciples, learning how to overcome our fear. And the scripture I love is Luke 8, 50, when um, the man came to Jesus and said, heal my daughter, it's my only child, mm. she's dying. And the woman touches Jesus' hem. He doesn't get there on time. Servant comes back, forget about calling right. Jesus. Forget about it, she died. And, this, and Jesus told him, don't fear, believe. So what overcomes fear is our belief in who God is. That's right. So remember That's this good. scripture in Luke 8. Jesus is telling you, don't fear, believe. So fear and unbelief go together and fear tries to grip our unbelief. Believe what God says. Even if she passed, she would be forever with the Lord. But Jesus had another plan. He went in, the, he only took two disciples, the parents went in and he prayed, Lord, this is for your glory. She arose. That's good. You know, so his yeah. fear was quenched by his belief. Oh, that's so good. Corey, what that's do you good. have for me? Um, I just think that um, perfect, we, the verse, perfect, perfect love th casts yes. out fear. Yes. Um, and trusting God casts out fear. You know, if we fully trusted God, there would be no fear. You know, it, and, and how many times in the Bible it says, do not fear, do not fear. I mean, and we're, we're imperfect. So there are going to be times that we fear, but he gives us that, that word so that we know that he is there and that we can trust him. Right. And Amy, you're, you're a pastor, but sometimes you have fear. Yeah. What, what I would say about fear, and I'm not talking about the reverential fear of the Lord, not that right. kind of, that awe and that reverence, but... I would be very careful not to coddle fear, mm -hmm. don't baby fear, carry mm -hmm. fear around with you because fear has torment. Yes. Fear is crippling. I mean, fear needs to be our nemesis like because it, you're going to either be in faith in belief right. or fear right. and anxiety. And, and those are two different train tracks. And I'm not talking about like, oh, there's a bear. I should... I have warning signs. I'm talking about just in your everyday walk with God. We want to fully trust in him, fully believe. And I would sh slam the door on fear. So when you have fear, when your children leave the house, which yeah. I know you well, yeah. then what do you do? I go to the scriptures, I pray, I worship, and I just attack and fight back. In those what? principalities and powers. Have I do no not power. let those thoughts just lamb blast me in my mind. <laughs> I'm watching the clock and okay. you're writing to me. <laughs> I know. I have to close and I want my time too. Oh my gosh. Okay. Bye. Well, you put it in your closet. Right? <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> hey, Flo, squeeze that leg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only Flo and I know about the squeezing leg.
There were so many questions today that involve our soul. Talking about submission, marrying the wrong man, being judgmental, and on and on. But you know, today we want to close with the scripture as we always do. And this is out of the book of Psalms. Psalms 143 verse 8. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning. Keep that in mind, in the morning. For in you do I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk. For I lift up my soul to you. Cause me to know, to know the way in which I should walk. Early in the morning, early in the morning, there was a song. Early in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus early in the morning. We want to present Jesus to you in such a way that you will walk this walk out with your soul being cultivated and grounded and being transformed in the Lord. Why? Because you work out your soul salvation with fear and trembling. And so even though we talked about fear today, we talked about fear, but there is a fear that is a reverential fear that causes you to fall so deeply in love with your Lord and Savior. And he is the one that will guide you in submission. He is the one that will give you wisdom and give you answers. Boy, what a great show today. And we end with this. As iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a woman or my flow sharpen the other. We'll see you next time. We are Sister to Sister.